this was some to do uh, a divorce. So. Yep. Yep. I went to law school with Andy. So uh, known oh, him for quite a while. You went to Baylor. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Well, Samantha went to UT with him, so that's where he yeah. knows her from. So. Anyway, um, what all do you need to know? I, I did send to your assistant, I sent the papers that he did online already for divorce. This really has come as a shock to me um, after 36 years, you know, <laughs> but whatever. Yeah. He wants to date around. But right now, and a, according to a friend of mine who was a judge, she said the courts don't care if somebody's mentally incompetent. Or not, they just rule. But he really, he just, he just spent two weeks at a mental hospital, and part of this comes from I had to have a warrant, a mental illness warrant issued for him because he wouldn't go get help, and so a lot of that is he doesn't trust me anymore. He hates me, and he's still not out of the woods. In fact, he may be worse now that he came out of it. But he really wants this divorce. And apparently he had started doing this before he even went in to the mental hospital. So um, that's what I needed. He wants to do a pro se thing. And I know all about that because his ex-wife tried to get more money out of him. So we had a friend who was an attorney. Basically, he ghosted. He, he was John's. He swapped out some membership, something. Uh, to help John. And of course, the attorney didn't want to work with a pro se person and she just gave up. <laughs> so, and yeah. I know, and I, I know that little game that people play, but I just need to make sure that I am, I'm protected because at this point, I, I don't know that I am. That, yeah. uh, He's saying that he, well, oh, I'm sorry. A lot of the stuff he's saying is doesn't even make sense to me, but go ahead. But it wouldn't because he's not mentally competent. Well, I mean, first of all, I sympathize with the situation that you're in. This is not an easy situation. And I could tell myself from looking at some of these documents that he clearly has been through this before and kind of has an idea of how the process works, but like the actual meat and the substance of what needs to be done is not here and it's or it's wrong like i'm looking at the proposed decree that he sent over with his petition and it would not protect you whatsoever i mean honestly it wouldn't really protect him either like it's just done so poorly that uh, you both would end up in a mess later so where we're at now since you've been served you technically have i guess which day were you served on well, I haven't been. He just emailed that to me. Does that count? Oh, okay. No, he no, hasn't had me served no. yet. He hasn't had me okay. served. Well, you haven't signed that waiver of service document he gave you, right? You haven't signed anything? No, I have not. Okay, perfect. Okay. So uh, then I'll backtrack. We're not actually under a deadline of any kind yet. If okay. If we're formally served, then um, you would have... It's easy for me to say you have 20 days to file an answer, but it's really you have until 10 a.m. on the Monday following the, the date that you were served, or the 20th day after you were served. Okay. It's complicated, but we want to get an answer on file as quickly as possible. You don't have to be served. We could just go ahead and file an answer and skip that step if you don't, I mean, if you'd like to have someone come serve you, then. Okay. Certainly yeah. <laughs> do that, but. He said he um, wants to I, embarrass me. He wants it sent to the college where I teach. Then and let's prevent <laughs> that by just filing an answer. And what we'll do at the same time is file a counter petition uh, that basically properly puts requests before the court on how things should be done. Okay. Uh, what we need to do then, um, I understand from when you spoke with Kristen that there is quite a bit of debt that he's accrued, that yeah. maybe some of it is something we need to contest. Uh, but what I what I want to do is I would want you to start filling out. I've got a bunch of forms and um, requests for documents, okay. basically to get an idea of where the financial picture is at. It's possible that from a settlement standpoint, what he's proposing is actually a decent settlement for you, as long as 
um, you know, I want to check it out and make sure. And if yeah. it's not, then we obviously want to get something together that makes sense, that protects you, that's equitable, that, you know, not asking for anything that the court can't order. Um, so as far as his mental health, because you had mentioned that as well, um, whoever you spoke with was correct, that when it comes to a divorce, uh, you all are entitled to a divorce regardless. And so right. The judge can do that. It's not like a criminal trial where if they find someone not mentally stable where they are going to be limited on how they can proceed. Right. Um, I mean, there is a, a no-fault-based ground in Texas where you can ask for a divorce based on someone being confined in a mental hospital. But honestly, at this point, it would just be easier and more cost-effective to just do a, a normal divorce. Okay. Um, uh, because you all don't have minor children. Correct. I do have a dog. I want custody of my dog. <laughs> okay. Okay. But yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, technically, dogs are personal property in the state of Texas. <laughs> Just like a know, child. Dog. Okay. Yeah. No, m no minor children. And um, he wants to keep paying the mortgage and that might be something that i could use as leverage um to say okay instead of getting a quarter of my ira which i've lost a lot of money on by the way lately so i'm at ninety four thousand right now but it would have been more um if i just say once the house is paid off in six years, then when I sell it, we split it 50 50. Could we do something like that? You can. So, I mean, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, I know that he want, he wants to still pay the gas bill, he wants to pay the water bill, he wants to pay the mortgage and I said but what if you default on the mortgage he said yeah. I won't and so I guess the other alternative is to to prove to my mortgage company that I can make the payments with my income and whatever's left I guess of my IRA and uh then because I've been spending a lot of money trying to put the fires out with him and I, I just can't I can't do it anymore yeah and um no, just him? Both of us. Both of you. So how we typically handle houses are, I mean, there's a few things that startled me in his proposed decree. One, the request that he can continue living in the house until some unknown date in the future. Yeah. Like, no, if y'all are getting divorced, then no, <laughs> he needs to go. Uh, but how do I get him out? That That's the thing. He says he has no place well, to go. Yeah, so once... Uh, once the case gets started, there's a number of ways. Okay. If you want him out of the house quickly, we can always request what are called temporary orders and ask the court to order that he vacate by a date certain. Okay. Uh, you know, usually judge will give people a week or two, maybe a month, just kind of depending on the circumstances. Okay. Otherwise, um, when we negotiate the final terms of the divorce and the home is awarded to you, there will be a clause in there that says the same thing. He has to leave by a certain date. And so it's going to be his burden to find a suitable living arrangement in that time. And that's just part of being a grown up. Okay. Uh, right. Well, I mean, he, but that's the thing. I do want the house because I'm 68. Yeah. It's all on one level. I got to have a knee replacement this summer. We've got a pool for my therapy. Everything's just perfect mm -hmm. for a yeah. retired person. Um, Absolutely. so I really want that. That's my number one goal. Um, and again, I hate giving him part of my, I just talked to my financial advisor and I said, I hate to think that I have to give him a quarter of my money so he can pay it for sex and, you know, with strippers and all these other people he's been messing around with that my hard-earned money from teaching all of these years is going to that. That's just wrong. I Not right. It's not right. A lot of things aren't fair. And the way I look at it is he wants the divorce. I did not. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And I don't disagree with that. That's why I'd want to do that 
investigation piece of this to okay. actually determine what he actually has a claim to or what's that dollar figure that we're okay. talking about. Okay. Uh, My daughter also, I don't know if you want any of this, but she's got proof of what all he's doing online and, and our, she's got it all printed out. So I don't know if you want that. I mean, he's, it used to be infidelity was a big thing. Apparently it's not anymore. So it certainly is religiously with me. That's a very big thing. But I mean, he's even admitted it to our minister that in writing. Um, so adultery is handled in two different ways, but they kind of coincide under the family code. So when we talk about the court being able to grant a divorce, there's fault-based grounds and no fault divorces. Mm -hmm. No fault divorces are just, we don't want to be married anymore. Yeah, but that's what he wants. Yeah, a fault-based divorce is somebody done something wrong, and so now that's why the, the divorce is coming. And so you could always ask for the divorce to be granted on a fault-based ground of adultery, because okay. that is one of them. Um, if the court you know, grants the divorce on a fault-based ground, you would be entitled to um, what we call a disproportionate division of the community estate. So your community estate is anything that y'all have earned or acquired during marriage with a few exceptions. Mm -hmm. um, if you inherited anything or something was gifted to you, or if it's anything that you own prior to marriage, those are going to be yours separately. But uh, normally when we look at that community estate, we're going to be looking at dividing it pretty close to 50-50. But if somebody's done something wrong, the court can award the innocent spouse more of that community estate. When I say that, though, I have seen... Courts do maybe a 55-45 split, maybe mm. a 60-40 maybe a split. Mm. So okay. there's that piece of it. The second piece of it is if you can prove that he has spent money or incurred debt on things that he shouldn't have. And I don't mean like frivolous spending like he went out to dinner. No, I'm talking you about $15,000 on an heiress scam. That they yeah. needed the, this we, money in Amsterdam, exactly. Holland. Oh, yeah, we've got all that. Yep, yep, yep. He did. Yeah, he's like spending money on other women. And mm. he's spending money on a lot of these things that you've mentioned. Something like that, like that scam. All of that can be taken into account and basically um, used to increase what you get and what you walk away with. Because he, basically the court's going to say, well... But for his bad actions, this other money would have been there in your community estate or your debt would have been less. Yes. So he needs to be stuck with that and you shouldn't be penalized. So there's ways we can look at that, too. It's just going to be a matter of piecing it all together, kind of okay. figuring out what's the best option for you as far as getting a proposal together. Um, keeping as much of my money as I can and keeping my house. Because to me, absolutely. I want it to start. Well, how much of a reti retainer are we talking about? Um, so our firm, um, we do two different billing systems. And so there's two, two different retainer amounts and you can choose which option you prefer. Okay. Um, for divorces without children, my typical retainers start um so a traditional style retainer where you um you pay the retainer up front and then you get a bill every month mm -hmm. that shows what we what work we've done everybody's got an hourly rate that we bill at um so you get that statement at the end of the month it comes out um, and then there's an expectation that you just keep that retainer replenished throughout the case and then at the end of the case that you know whatever's left in it comes back to you mm -hmm. for a uh, divorce without kiddos uh, my typical starting retainer that route is five thousand okay um going I have another option that allows me to lower it a little bit um some people like this option some people hate it it's up to you um what we do instead of billing monthly out of your trust account with a replenishment is you pay the lower retainer amount up front and then every week for the charges that were incurred for the prior week um, we put that on a credit card that you'd put on file with the firm. Same thing there at the end of the case, whatever's left in your trust account comes back to you. But the trust account sits there more of a security as in case credit card doesn't go through one week mm -hmm. or something like that. So for that, I usually quote for a divorce without kids, 3500 Okay. Um, 
I might, I'm going to go ahead and do the 5,000. Okay. So, Perfect. um, I don't know if I can get it until Monday or Tuesday. I can call or whatever I need to do to send it to y'all then. I got to call my financial advisor. Basically. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my so what will happen is, <laughs> yeah, um, Kristen, um, who you spoke with before, yes. she'll send you our contract documents for right. you to take a look at. Um, and she'll send you some options to get that paid. Mm -hmm. um, and next week is perfectly fine. I can. Uh, well, I'm going to call my financial advisor written. now. So she'll probably okay. say it's late in the day. I can't get it transferred over to you right now. Yeah. So, um, but who knows? Maybe she can. But if if Kristen will, Kristen, right? If she will Kristen, send, yep. if she will send that to me, then I uh, will have all the information I need to get back and get, and pay y'all Monday or Tuesday. Perfect. Yep, that's great. Okay. Um, one there... thing I just want to let you know, because sometimes people have this question is, uh, will the case be done for the retainer amount? I do everything I can to try to keep cases as cost effective as possible for people, because I know at the end of the day, that's the most important thing that you walk away from the case. And I appreciate you know, that. Yeah. Possible, yeah. But at the same time, especially when, and I'm, I'm really telling you this because of the circumstances of this case. If we're dealing with somebody who, one, doesn't have an attorney, and two, is maybe not thinking in their right state of mind anyways, there are things that may occur that could cause a case to be more expensive. Mm -hmm. I'll do everything I can to work around that and try to prevent that from happening, but I just want you to know up front, because I don't want you to be surprised later if he starts doing something that's outlandish that we've got to deal with, but then there's costs that are associated with that. So hopefully we can get it all wrapped mm -hmm. up. Uh, should we uh start getting the I'll get the paperwork from my daughter that proves the scams he's okay. been in and and all of this and get that ready to send next week also mm -hmm. okay yeah cause... if you want to do that and if you want to start gathering just recent statements for your account okay sure um you know Absolutely. your retirement account your mortgage balance all of that that'll help as well Okay. Um, so I can get that property analysis started. Okay. Um, okay. So let me ask you the billable things. We had a an attorney we paid five thousand dollars to to uh, okay. go after our school district when our daughter was there because they were discriminating against her against Samantha actually, and mm -hmm. he never sent me a bill, never this, never that. After three months, he says, "Okay, I've used all your money," and my my sister said. You don't do business like that. He was supposed to send oh. you a statement. So now, and I realize every time I call you or every time you call me, I just want to get all this up front. That's billable. Yeah. That's billable. Also, the time, if I send you this paperwork, you'll bill, of course, for the time it takes you to read it and, and do whatever you need to on it, right? So those are billable things. Now, if John calls you, that's also billable. That makes sense. It yeah, but I, if, is, if, if yeah. he abuses that, I'd say you need to talk to your wife about that. <laughs> so my general rule with that, especially with pro se parties, is I actually try to avoid speaking to them on the phone at all. Okay. Um, one, for a cost thing, like you just brought up, but two, because um, it really, honestly, it's selfish. It protects me because they're always they're going to come back and say, I told them oh. X, Y, and Z that I didn't tell them. And so I try to avoid speaking to opposing parties. Sometimes it's inevitable and it has to happen, but yeah. I try to avoid that at all costs anyway. That's just not a not a great scenario. Okay. Um, well, that's great. I um, Okay, so we'll get the ball rolling, I guess. And what is your last name? I, <laughs> My last name's Esslinger. It's Esslinger? Yes, E-S-L-I-N-G-E-R. -E okay, I got it. Okay, I got it. Um, all right, so I'll just wait to get that information from Kristen. I'm going to call after we hang up. I'm going to call and talk to my um, financial advisor and get the money. And then we'll just go from there next week. But I know one of the first things that I'm going to need to do, he's going to go stay with his brother on Sunday, but I, I can't live with him because what he'll start doing is 
well, I'll stay and live with you. I said, well, if you're you're the one who wants to the divorce, you go find a place to go. Well, I can't afford it. Mm-hmm. It's like he does and he doesn't want to get a yeah. divorce. And and I can't take the waffling back and forth. I, it's just crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I it, that's the one thing. I want to get the, it settled about him getting him an order to be out by a certain date. Okay. That's one of my first how, things. Yeah, how I'll probably handle that is I'll probably send him either probably I don't know, does he use email or Yes. Yes, he does. Okay. So I'll probably send him an email saying that we're requesting that he vacate by a certain date and just okay. see if he'll agree to it. If not, we'll have to have a a hearing in front of the judge for the judge to order it. Okay. Um, which obviously costs more. So I'm gonna try to settle it right. the other way through yeah. email first. Um Okay. Yeah, to get that, to get that settled for you. Okay, okay, we will do that, and um, I guess that's all I have. Um, and so, yeah, hopefully, hopefully it won't be more than five thousand. I think he's not wanting to pay anything, so hopefully he'll make it shorter. But he said if I did fight him on it, he would make it. He'd go for everything. Well, you could try, but I've anyway. been doing this for a while, so I thought. I'm not too scared about well, that. if you're a friend of Andy's, I know that you're a go-getter because his friends are all that way. You and my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yep, I know. But anyway, I appreciate this and I look forward to meeting you in person. I'm sorry it's under these circumstances, but um, hopefully we can get this done quickly. Absolutely. And if you need anything, don't hesitate to reach out, okay? I won't. Thank you so much. And I'll talk to you next week. And I'll look forward to getting Kristen's email. Okay, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.